Hello, my name's Andy, and in this Tech Talk, I'm going to look at setting up the Omron Remote Access Unit, the Omron Controller. It could be an NJ, NX, or screen, or any device really that connects on Ethernet. On this slide, just showing what a typical local scenario is, where we have a PC connected directly to a controller, so we can set up the controller settings in Sysmac Studio and also setting up the PC's Ethernet LAN port using the control panel and then navigating through the Internet IP setup with the properties and setting up a fixed local Class C IP address. Another option, um, obviously, is just to use a switch uh, in this standard configuration. On this slide, I'm showing at my home address. I just have a simple Wi-Fi connection to my home router, which takes me out to the internet. You can see in the cloud, uh, cloud service, which you can access. We'll see that in just a minute. At the remote location, which is where the machine would be, you can see the NJ controller inside the machine is connected directly wired to a Dev1 port, the device port on the Omron remote access unit. The uplink method is how site manager unit accesses the internet. And in my example, I'm going to set the site manager up using a Wi-Fi connection to a 4G router. When you receive the site manager unit, it will come with a instruction sheet. And as I'm doing, if you follow the instruction sheet, it all works out pretty straightforward. I'm going to use the free to download appliance launcher software to configure the local connection, the uplink from the site manager box to its internet access point. So just as you do with many other pieces of software on the internet, you can just download the exe file run the exe file from where you saved it and you will have installed the launcher software. Then when you run it and you're connected to the site manager unit with a LAN cable on the Dev1 port as instructed by the instruction sheet, which I'm following, you will get the site manager unit come up on the list of devices. If you're connected point to point like I am, then if you follow the next and go through the wizard. On this slide, you can see on the next step in the wizard, the IP address is fixed for the Dev1 port. And really all you're needing to do is check this doesn't interfere with anything in the range on your network. This has the last octet as 100, so that should be fine. Clicking next, going through, you'll see where to enter the Wi-Fi access point, enter that and the password for the local situation. And then finally, you can give your site manager a name. Uh, obviously, this probably would carry the machine name or something useful to identify the appliance. By the way, in Sokomia terminology, the appliance is the site manager unit itself um, because typically there'll be one site manager connected to um, several devices in a machine. Clicking next takes you 
through to the final dialog window in the wizard. And the appliance should reboot and a connection will be established up to the cloud. On this image, you can see how I have the site manager locally. I've added the Wi-Fi antenna, which came in the box. I've plugged in an ethernet patch cable directly to my machine via a switch. And I've added 24 volt DC supply. So in my scenario, pretty much all you need for the setup you do at the home end is you just need normal internet access. Having internet access and obviously having purchased your unit, um, whoever supplies you with the unit will also uh, take credentials in order you to receive emails uh, containing the uh, security certificates that you will need to establish the encryption. Having received the emails, you can open the web page. The web address is given on the instruction sheet. Um, and then pretty much you can just follow the login screens, choose the file button. Um, you can select the choose file button and navigate in Windows to the file where you save the certificates, enter the password that would have come with the email, and typically you'll change your password, accept the terms and conditions and continue, and then you should navigate directly to the gate manager page. Then you can follow the wizard with the next button. Follow the wizard through pressing next. Following the wizard through, you'll eventually find your way to the end page where you can see your device over on the left here. You can see the demo case. Because I was handed the site manager, uh, from a colleague, I still have some old names in there, so I'm going to use the Site Manager GUI, Graphical User Interface, to change those names. So if I click on that, then I'll get the Site Manager GUI. I can go to the setup and I can change the device names. And the last thing I'll do um, is from the emails, I'll go back and go on to the link manager. And uh, on the main splash page, you'll see the link manager. And enter the credentials for the link manager. So now we can see uh, with a short video clip, a test connection being made. So if we open the gate manager on the website, go to the gate manager portal, enter the password that you have created, click login, get to the splash page, do a connect tool, Software has already detected the link manager is installed. And there I can see my devices. Now, if I do a ping test, this is from the remote PC. I can see my two devices. So I've got two controllers in this example. So the ping test work. Finally, it just remains really to connect Sysmax Studio. So on this is the Ethernet connection via a hub, just as you would if you were local.
So we establish a connection with Sysmax Studio. Again, same as if you were local and everything's working in that way. So just for proof, I'm just gonna make sure I can do an upload. And see if we've got some program. So this is a auto, auto connect project. So now I can see some example programs. So that's everything for now. Um, I agree the connection I think was pretty simple. I hope you found it interesting and thanks for listening.